this video is all about parabolas. So again, we're just going to be using what we quickly reviewed in our last video, which is how to find things like the vertex or the focus or the directrix and so on. And then we will look at the sketch of the graph, but I'm not super concerned that you can graph it yourself. I'm more concerned that you can choose the correct graph out of a lineup. Let's look at our first example together. And what we want to do is, it only asks for the vertex focus and directrix, but it also asks us to sketch. So really what I'm going to do is go through all of these things, um, the axis of symmetry, the directrix, the focus, the lattice rectum. We're going to do them all. So what we would do first is notice that I've given you this equation not in the standard form not the standard equation of a parabola, but just the general form, which isn't super helpful. So now we have to do some work. And when I do the work, again, I'm trying to turn it into this form so that I can identify H and K and P. So that's what I need to identify is H and K and P, because those are all of the values I need to find everything. And in order to do that, I of course need it in the correct form. So I'm going to write x squared minus 2x and leave myself a little bit of space. And then I'm going to move everything else to the opposite side by adding 4y to each side and adding 7 to each side. So 4y plus 7. And I'm actually going to take away that plus blank um, and make it a different color. And so whenever I'm doing this, what I'm trying to do is complete the square on the left-hand side of the equation. So again, everything in this video is all review of things you've learned in other classes. So you should have already learned about a parabola and you should have learned how to complete the square, but these are things that you may have forgotten. So to complete the square, every single time, we're going to add to each side b divided by two quantity squared. And you might be thinking, hold up, where's B come from? Well, we know that a quadratic, which is what I have on the left-hand side, is in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. So essentially, I'm finding C. And I'm going to do that by taking B, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. So this is going to give me negative 2 over 2 squared, which is negative 1 squared, which is positive one. Now this value is going to be very important. So whatever you end up squaring, just remember what value that is. So what I have now is I'm going to add one here and add one here. That gives me x squared minus two x plus one is equal to four y plus eight. Now, why did I make a big deal about the negative one? Well, because now what I have on the left-hand side of my equation is a perfect square trinomial. And a perfect square trinomial can be rewritten as the square root of the first value and then plus or minus the square root of the last value, quantity squared. And so notice negative one, negative one. That will always be the case. So the left-hand side is x minus one quantity squared. The right-hand side, I want to also write it in this form. So p, 4p times the quantity of y minus k. So basically whatever I can take out, which in this case is just four, and then y plus two. So let's identify what we can identify now. I can identify that this value is h. So h is 1. I know based on, again, this equation that 4 is equal to 4p and therefore p must be 1. So p is 1. And I know that positive 2 is not k but that negative 2 is k because I'm expecting the value to be minus. So I've subtracted a negative two. So again, K is negative two. So using those values, we're going to find everything we need to find. And we will graph them as we go. So here's my graph. It's not going to be a pretty graph and it doesn't have to be because really I'm just going to have you 
do a multiple choice which graph is which type of situation so you won't have to graph it but let's go ahead and take a look at what I can find what we should start with is the vertex so the vertex can be found by taking h comma k which is 1 comma negative 2 so 1 comma negative 2 is my vertex my axis of symmetry is x equals h x equals h is x equals 1 and again that's the equation of a line so that should be a line at x equals 1 and typically the axis of symmetry is drawn as a dotted line the next is the directrix the directrix is also a line y is equal to k minus p which is negative 2 minus 1 or negative 3 y equals negative 3 would be this line right here and remember the significance of the directrix is that every point on our parabola is the equal distant from the directrix and the focus so that brings us to the focus the focus is h which is 1 comma k plus p negative 2 plus 1 or 1 comma negative 1 so 1 comma negative 1 is right here that's my focus I'm going to go ahead and put a v next to this guy and then the last thing I want to find is the lattice rectum and that is two different points so this is just going to give me the end points of the lattice rectum which is h or 1 plus or minus 2 times p which is 2 times 1 comma k plus p so k is negative 2 p is 1 so that's going to give me two values the first is 1 plus 2 times 1 or 1 plus 2 which is 3 comma negative 2 plus 1 and the second is 1 minus 2 times 1 or 1 minus 2 which is negative 1 comma negative 2 plus 1 which is negative 1 so I have the point 1 2 3 negative 1 and negative 1 negative 1 and so what does my graph look like well it's going to start at the vertex or that's going to be our lowest point and I'm just going to go through the two values that I find for my lattice rectum so I could be more precise about it but that's going to be plenty let's do another example now going in the opposite direction so the first example we had our standard parabola that opens up or down now as you can see I've got a y squared value instead of an x squared value which means my graphs either going to look like this somewhat or like that so let's see what we come up with we're going to start the exact same way so I have y squared plus 6y I'm going to leave a space and then I'm going to subtract 8x from each side and subtract 25 from each side and then I'm leaving space for that plus blank and remember the blank is b over 2 quantity squared which in this case would be 6 over 2 quantity squared or 3 squared keeping in mind that that 3 is important which is 9 so I'm going to um, add a 9 to each side but the reason the 3 was important is because now I can write the left side as y plus 3 quantity squared since it is a perfect square trinomial on the right side I have negative 8x and then I have negative 25 plus 9 or negative 16 so the last step is to factor out whatever I need to factor out so this gives me y plus 3 quantity squared is equal to negative 8 if I take out negative 8 that gives me x plus 2 left over let's identify the h and the k and the p value so y minus uh, k would be that k is negative 3 x minus h would be that h is negative 2 and negative 8 is equal to 4p 
and therefore dividing by 4, I would get negative 2 is equal to P. So there's my values. I'm just going to write it a little bit further up. P is equal to negative 2. So from here, I'm just going to do exactly what I did last time. I'm going to graph this and see what my parabola would look like. And so I would start by finding the vertex. And the vertex is HK, which is negative 2, negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3 is about right there. Then I will find the axis of symmetry, which for one going right to left is Y equals K or Y equals negative 3. So that's going to be that dotted line that goes through the vertex that I would be able to fold my parabola in half across. Then let's find the directrix. The directrix is also the equation of a line. It is x equals h minus p, negative 2 minus negative 2, and that's x equals 0. That's this line right here. And remember, that's going to be the same distance from the vertex as the focus. So let's now find the focus. The focus is h comma or h plus p, so that's negative two plus negative two, comma k, which is negative four comma negative three. So negative four negative three is the focus. And again, I can see that the vertex is the same distance from the focus and the directrix. The last thing we would do is find the length of the lattice rectum, and that is going to be, or the endpoints, excuse me, of the lattice rectum, and that is h plus p, so negative 2 plus negative 2, comma, k, which is negative 3, plus or minus 2 times negative 2, and that should give me two ordered pairs. So the first is negative 2 plus negative 2, which is negative 4, comma, negative 3 plus negative 4, and then the other is negative 4 and negative 3 minus negative 4, or negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. So I have negative 4, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, somewhere down here. Sorry, I shorted you a little bit. And then negative 4, 1, which is negative 4, 1. So that's this distance. And then to draw the picture, I would go through those points as well as the vertex. And again, it's just a rough sketch. We didn't find any other exact points besides those two values of the lattice rectum and the vertex. You may also be given a question like this, where we are given certain information about characteristics of the parabola and asked to determine the equation or other aspects of the parabola. Now, if you're a very visual person, it's okay for you to plot the point 2, 2 and the directrix at x equals negative 2 and begin to take a look at what that parabola might look like. I'm going to choose to do this the mathy way, which is to determine, first of all, do we have a vertical axis of symmetry or a horizontal axis of symmetry? And what is H and K and P? So given the information, I know that the directrix is X equals negative two. So right off the bat, I'm crossing off that first information because the directrix is in the form X equals H minus P. So what that tells me, if I know X is equal to H minus P and X is equal to negative two, that tells me that H minus P is equal to negative two. So I don't know any uh, values of variables yet, but I do know that H minus P is negative two. The other thing I know is that the focus, which is H plus P comma K is two comma two. So if h plus p comma k is 2 comma 2, that means k is equal to 2. 
then I'm going to solve for h and for p. So the other thing I can glean from this is that h plus p, excuse me, h plus p is equal to positive 2. Now this is a simple system of equations that I can solve. 2h and then negative p and positive p is 0, negative 2 and positive 2 is 0, which means h must be 0. So h is 0. To solve for p, I'm going to say, well, if h plus p was equal to 2 and h is 0, then obviously p is equal to 2. So from here, all I have to do is put it together. I know all of the values that I need to know. I'm going to say y minus k, k is 2, quantity squared is equal to 4 times p, which is 2, and then x minus h, which is 0. Cleaning that up a little bit, I have y minus 2, quantity squared is equal to 8, and then x minus 0 obviously is just x. So I can leave my solution just like that. Up next, we're going to take a closer look at ellipses.